All right, in this video, we're going to calculate the exact trig function values at given angles. I'm going to give you an angle, not necessarily in quadrant one, and I'm going to ask you for the exact value. So for this set of examples here, we're not going to use our calculators. We're not going to you know, come up with decimal answers or anything like that. Every answer we give is going to be an exact value. Some of them are going to be you know, like radical 3 over 2, radical 2 over 2, things like that. You'll recall that in my previous two videos about the unit circle, we focused primarily on the angles in quadrant 1 or 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Now we're going to sort of extend that idea to quadrant 2, 3, and 4. So that's the plan for this video. We're going to look at cosine, sine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. So the first thing on your screen here is 240 degrees. You first want to start by graphing this angle. So what I'm going to do on this coordinate system here is start with my initial side. Initial side is on the x-axis, of course. That's where the, the uh, angle 240 degrees starts, and it's a positive angle, so it's going to open clockwise. This is 90 degrees, this is 180, this is 270. So 240 is going to be a little bit before 270. And that ray right there is called the terminal side. That's where the angle stops. So that's our angle, angle theta. Let's call that. Let's just call it 240 degrees. This is a third. This is a third quadrant angle. And what we want to do from here is look at the what we call the reference angle. And the reference angle is going to be the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis. And we usually call that theta prime. And that reference angle is, in this case, we're in degrees, so the reference angle can be in degrees. This is 180 degrees right here. So this is, if this is 240, the difference between 240 and 180 is 60. So my reference angle is 60 degrees. All right, and we are going to use that reference angle to get our value and then at the end we're going to see whether that value is positive or negative. So the cosine of 60 degrees is what we're looking for right now. The cosine of 60. Well, we have a giant chart here that we looked at in our previous video and here it is. This is the exact snapshot of that of that notebook and you can see that the cosine of 60 degrees is right here. It's one half. All right, so I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say, okay, this is one half. The cosine of 60 is one half, but remember, 60 degrees is up here. That's 60 degrees. It's, it's in the first quadrant. Our angle is in the third quadrant, so we have to be careful about the value in terms of positive and negative. And the rule is the little mnemonic device that we use is that all students take calculus. All students take calculus. So what that means is in this quadrant everything is positive. Sine, cosine, tangent are all positive. In this quadrant only the sine is positive. In this quadrant only the tangent is positive. And in this quadrant only the cosine is positive. But you know sine goes along with cosecant. So they're both positive. Tangent and cotangent cosine and secant. All right, so if in this quadrant, if you are not tangent or cotangent, then you are negative. So the cosine of 240 is negative one half. It's this one half and then a negative in front of it. Now, where does that come from? Well, if we drew a little reference triangle here and we had our theta prime here, right? This is a 30, 60, 90, so the theta prime was our 60 degree angle. And we remember that in the unit circle, our hypotenuse is one, and this would be one half, negative, and then negative radical three over two. 
that would be this point down here. All right, you'd go left one half and then down, left one half and then down, radical three over two. So the cosine of that angle is adjacent. So the cosine of 60 degrees in this case, well, that's not true. The cosine of, I guess we'll just call it theta prime, which I guess is 60, but it's in this case, in the third quadrant, it's negative one half divided by the hypotenuse, which is one. So that's why we get a negative one half, because the point is to the left, the x value is to the left of the origin. All right, and we remember that cosine is the x value in all this. Sine is the y value, cosine is the x value. So that's why this is a negative one half. So you can either remember this mnemonic, all students take calculus, or you can sort of understand where the positives and negatives come from. Let's move on. We're going to get one of each. We're going to get a sign next. So I'll, I'll kind of revisit that chart. Maybe I'll pull it down here. And I'll revisit that every time. This is in class. You should probably have this, you know, pretty close at all times. You don't. You probably want to have it on like a nice piece of uh, cardstock or something or a note card, uh, just so you kind of immerse yourself in it because you're going to use it all the time. 135 degrees. So let's put the initial side there on the x-axis and this is 135 degrees so it opens this way counterclockwise that's 90 plus another 45 so this angle right there that's your terminal side that's 135 degrees this is a quadrant 2 angle the reference angle is the distance between 135 and 180. Well, that reference angle is 45 degrees. All right, so to find the sine of 135, you really want to think about the sine of 45, the reference angle. The sine of 45 so the sine of 45, if you remember from your chart, all right, this is one that is right here. It's radical 2 over 2. All right, so that's the sine of 45. And we're going to use that value up here, but we're just going to be careful about the positive and negative of it. And remember, all students take calculus. So in quadrant two, sine and cosecant are positive. So in this case, the answer is radical two over two. Now again, the reason that it's positive, if I'm not going to do this for every problem because I'm going to go a little bit faster here, but if you were to draw your reference triangle, right, we've got 45 degrees. This is one, that's our hypotenuse in the unit circle. And this is radical two over two, and this is negative radical two over two. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Radical two over two divided by one, it's positive. The cosine, of course, is negative, and the tangent is as well. Moving on. Again, I'll drag this down with me. We're going to use it again and again. So here we go. Tangent of 750. All right, 750. Geez, that's a big angle. It's going to go, it's positive, so I know I definitely start, let me draw it again. I definitely start counterclockwise. So here we go. Let's do 90, 180, 270, 360. Let's go around again. 90, 180, 270, 360. That's 720. All right, 360 twice is 720. So this is a little bit more. This is 30 degrees more than 720. This is 750 degrees. Let's find our reference angle, our theta prime, is the sort of the difference between 750 and 720, so that would be 30 degrees. So here we're looking for the tangent of 30 degrees. So if I go down here to my chart, all right, I have the tangent of 30 degrees as radical 3 over 3. And all students take calculus. In the first quadrant, everything is positive. Everything is positive. So the tangent of 750 is also radical 3 over 3. 
Do three more. This one's going to be a negative angle. We're still in degrees. We're going to go into radians in a minute. But now a negative angle still starts in standard position, but negative angles go this way, clockwise. So this is negative 90, negative 180. We don't want to go negative 180. We want to go negative 150. So let's go negative 90 plus 60. So that's negative 150 degrees. This is this would be negative 180. So I want to know the reference angle here. What's the difference between 150 and 180? Well, that answer is 30 degrees. So my reference angle is 30. So I really want to know the cosecant of 30 and then figure out whether it's positive or negative. So the cosecant of 30 degrees, that is 2. It's right here. And we are in the, let's see, the third quadrant. The third quadrant, tangent and cotangent are positive. Everything else is negative. So this would be negative 2. Moving on. Forgot my chart. Let's move into uh, radians. Let's do some angles in radian form. Secant of 5 pi over 4. Remember, radian is just a different way of measuring angles. So there's 0 pi. This would be right here 90 degrees or pi over 2. This would be 180 or just pi. But we're in denominator of 4, so that would be 4 pi over 4. Right? Pi is just 4 pi over 4. When I see a denominator of 4, I want to make I want to try to get every what one of my denominators into uh, 4. So I've got uh, 4 pi over 4, and I just need to go another pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. So that would be 5 pi over 4. Again, it's a third quadrant angle. Reference angle for this would be the distance, or the difference rather, between 5 pi over 4 and 4 pi over 4. That's just 1 pi over 4. So I want to know the secant of pi over 4. The secant of pi over 4. If I look at my reference chart here, pi over 4 is 45 degrees. The secant is radical 2. So I'm going to use that to figure out the secant of 5 pi over 4. Remember, all students take calculus. This is a third quadrant angle. Only tangent and cotangent are positive in the third quadrant. So this would be negative. So the secant of pi over 4 is positive radical 2, but the secant of 5 pi over 4 is negative because it's a third quadrant. But we have to use this reference angle to actually get the value. And then the positive or negative comes from you know, these triangles that I, that I can draw. Right? This would be a 45, 45, 90. And this is radical 2 over 2. Well, that's negative radical 2 over 2. This is negative radical 2 over 2 as well. I'm drawing this triangle right here. And the secant is 1 over cosine. So it's going to be instead of adjacent over hypotenuse, the secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So this is going to be hypotenuse, which is 1 over adjacent. 1 over the adjacent is negative square root of 2 over 2. So flip that over 2 over negative radical 2. We'll rationalize, we get 2 root 2 over negative 2, which is negative square root of 2. So that's kind of the long way. Okay, let's do, uh, I think, one more here. We'll do a cotangent. Again, we're in radians. And I have a 6 as my denominator. So let's graph this first. Let's draw this angle. It's a negative angle, so I'm going clockwise. And I know that if I'm in... 6 is my denominator. I know that this would be a negative. So negative 3 pi over 6, negative 6 pi over 6, negative 9 pi over 6. I'm going this way. Negative 12 pi over 6. 
and uh, I'm getting these by, you know, I, I know that negative pi over 2 is right here. And I know that this is pi or negative pi. So I'm trying to convert all of them into something over 6. Back here at this point is negative 2 pi. So I converted that to something over 6, negative 12 pi over 6. So this angle goes past 360 degrees and it ends up about right here. It's negative 13 pi over 6. So let's look for that reference angle. The reference angle is right here. It's the difference between 13 pi over 6 and 12 pi over 6. That's just pi over 6. So if I go to cotangent of pi over 6, and I check out my chart, cotangent of pi over 6 is right down here. It's radical 3. This is a fourth quadrant. All students take calculus. So in the fourth quadrant, cosine and secant are positive. Everything else is negative. This is a cotangent, so it's negative radical 3. And I'm done. So there you go. That's how you, uh, the general way to calculate exact values of trig functions at any angle. Any angle could be quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. It could be positive, negative, degrees, radians. You could go around a couple times and then stop, whatever. Uh, just all comes back to this idea of reference angles and you know getting your values and then assigning the positive or negative to it. So hope that helped you. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go through uh, similar stuff, except we're going to actually kind of get away from the unit circle a little bit and, uh, you know, change this point on the terminal side to something a little bit different. So uh, any questions or comments, just uh, shoot them below, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.